we are continuing along with this project. From the beginning, our plan was to make our own version of a sports car. Taking cues from Ferrari, Lamborghini, even the Batmobile was an influence. We committed to making a mold and a fiberglass body in the end. So that gave us some freedom in how we designed it. But we didn't start with a drawing or a concept rendering. We've just been building the car one segment at a time. First the rear portion, then the front, then the roof. Now we just gotta tie it all together. Car is definitely evolving. The front and the rear look awesome. There's a huge hole in the side. You know, this is still, it's all conceptual. Until we put that mold on there, anything can happen. Got these wheel dollies from Eastwood. They're pretty cool in that typically you would have to jack the car up with a floor jack and slide this tray under them. But this has like a telescoping ram with wheels on the end. So as you pump it, it contracts and it squeezes the tire up off of the floor. Now the cool factor with these is you can rotate the car any which way. You know, I'm gonna need to look at this from the side profile, come up with a concept for the side panels. That's the thing, it's a work in progress, it's developing. You know, our main issue was, is the nose too long? And I think it works. You know, that's really what the side view shows. What we have now is all the elements on the wish list. The giant trough in the back, cool wrap around motorcycle helmet windshield, really exaggerated nose with the deep vents. So we're gonna need to tie that all in, but I think a good segue into that is to connect the dots. You know, there's a giant hole in the side of the car. See what develops with that, you know, creatively, and then we'll mix and match, decide how to blend them all together. I'm gonna drop this on the ground. So here's the deal. You know, this is the old fender. It's been pushed out four inches. I gotta create a whole new rocker panel that's easily four inches wider. Got a couple ideas with some vents in here and a way to improve on this access point. Everything has to start from somewhere. You know, my typical formula is just a blank slate. Just set up something before Victor gets here and then we'll hash it out. I'm really trying to give this car a, a truly exotic flavor, you know, one-off unique. And I think the side offers a ton of potential. We got all this leftover from the front hood. Let me see what this does. The main point of concern with this car is that there are no doors. So the roof is the access point. It opens and shuts. That seam has to look good with whatever design we come up with. Ian, what's going on? Uh, doing a little graffiti, as usual. I set the table for the big meal, and he comes in and devours it. Yeah, this is just too straight. It doesn't have no dimension. This whole car's got curves and angles, and I want nothing straight on the car. So this is perfect, because we have no choice. But from this point here, if we start to take it in to 3 quarters of the way in, just take it straight to this angle. First thing Victor's describing to me is he wants to create this large uh, bulge in the rear fender that will be an air vent leading into the engine bay. That's pretty awesome, yeah. Check it out from here. Look at how it actually gives shape to the bumper too. Look at how it's going down. So it'll actually uh, turn under and hit right up against that wow, rocker. That's like, yeah. Well, let me take this off and we'll do a paper template okay. of what that roof opening. Okay. That way we can lift the roof okay. and see, see what's gonna happen. Okay, yeah. cool. Not only are we designing this vent opening, it has to work with the door opening. You know, the roof opens and shuts. Victor really wants to be able to get inside the car comfortably, so those two points are gonna determine what the style is. So, here's the deal. The whole issue with lifting is we're scrubbing across this whole line. So if you can live with tapering this back a little. As per the usual, Victor's all ideas. You know, he's like, I want a rear vent, I want a front vent, I want this, that, the other thing, and a lot of good ideas on the table. 
right. Well, that's exactly what I had to ask you. You know, okay, I know you yeah. got, I know you're busy. Let me make this just like you described, and we'll see what comes out of it. All right, cool. All right, let's let her down. I love this part of the process. You know, it's all the envisioning. Victor and I, we hash out our ideas. He gives me a punch list of his wishes, desires, dreams, and I do whatever the heck I want. It's awesome. Yeah, I'll get this mocked up again, a little tighter. We'll go forward from there. Victor's got to take off, and I am ready to get to work. So Victor and I did this mock-up. You know, it seems like it's going to work, but standing back looking at it, there's definitely some issues. The wish list Victor had was to be able to get in and out of the car easy. I just don't want to sacrifice the look of the car for a bigger door. So the way that this line looks, when the roof is open, it's going to look terrible. It's like a freaking butterfly wing or something. Unacceptable. I mean, I saw this coming at us from the jump. You know, Victor's at one side of the fence and I'm on the other. What Victor's trying to get away with is, right now the car has no springs in it. It's low as it's ever gonna be. So he doesn't want to be like this, you know. It doesn't look right. He wants to have an area as low as possible to just kind of swing in Typical Ian scenario is I just avoid the situation until it's crisis time. Ideally, this I think is the most awesome look going. Just for the sake of getting in and out of the car, I hate to ruin the whole look. So now when the hood is open, it just looks like this weird freaking thing. As much as I'm into weird freaking things, this is not gonna fly. See, I do a little mind control with everything, and I'm sure that if I could just do exactly what I want and make it look so cool, so irresistible, Victor will just be hypnotized and go with the flow. I mean, that is starting to look better already. In simplest terms, the debate here is fashion versus function. You know, the whole thing is, at the end of the day, the roof has to open. The person has to get in the car, and it's still got to look cool. I know what Victor's asking me to do, but what I have to do is make it look good. Easier said than done. He was wanting to use the back of that existing fender as the scoop, but I'm thinking maybe that's not the case at all. Victor's wish list with this front vent, just, I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna try to substitute that with like an exaggerated bulging fender. I feel like the vent makes it look segmented, the bigger fender makes it look fast. See how much more meat it gives it behind the wheel arch? That balances it. I don't care what anybody's thinking right now. I'm in the zone. It's got a little more feeling like this. Like that. And there's a little less here. There's a couple things I'm considering is that how this area of the C-pillar flows down into the vent opening and I'm trying to come up with like an inner body shape that you'll step into through this area. And I think that'll help me finalize what happens with the front of the scoop. It all comes together, just get the clients out of the room build the cars. This thing is fleshing out. This is the car that I envision, you know? This is what I'm talking about. Massive intake for the vent, very shallow door, you know, it just looks like a fighter jet cockpit. The fenders look fast. It's pretty trick. I want to see this fender continue all the way to this point. I want the front fender to go right down into the beginning of the vent. Then the roof panel just comes somewhere in here and that small little roof lifts up. I'm gonna commit to this mock-up. Might mean my, my career, my reputation, my job here. <laughs> I say no front vent. Very trim roof line and one massive rear vent. I can go on for days, I can just talk the talk, but nothing's gonna prove it like putting in a couple more pieces and letting the boss check it out.
The one good thing about Victor and me is the relationship is kind of open-mindedness, you know? Every time he tells me to build a car his way, I build it my way, and he's very open-minded about that. <laughs> oh my God, that's an awesome car. I've never seen anything as satisfying as that front fender. Look at that. Standing back looking at this, you know, it is hyper-aggressive. You know, it's easy to pick up the ouch moments after the fact, and rocker panel looks a little caved in, but the rest of it is pretty cool. Just gonna put in a couple details here, you know, put in some mesh inside the air vent, that way it's well represented. Everything's looking good, this thing's getting ready to show to Victor. I don't know what he's gonna think, because it almost looks like one of those things you see on the wall of the butcher shop with the cow and all the cuts of meat. <laughs> I made a few bold design choices in comparison to what Victor was asking for, so I'm sure he's gonna love it. Ian, what's up? Hey, man, I got some progress. Wow, you definitely changed that around a lot, so you got rid of the vent in the front. Well, what like, happened? Like you were saying, the car was telling me what to do. At first, Victor walks in, and he's not really digging it. I don't think he likes it. You know, he's like, where's the front vents I asked for? In trying to figure out how the vent should look, and I don't know, I can't figure out. I tried a, like a crescent shape, tried an egg shape, I tried a whole bunch of different stuff, and it just always looked wrong. I know Victor's asking for a front vent, but I was feeling like a bigger fender, you know? Either way, it's not a loss, it's a point to develop, you know? We have something to work with. Every conceptual line was drawn on this car, and it just seemed better blank. The main reason I arrived at that area in the roof, that curve, I'll show you, we can open it. It looks so much nicer the way it comes around to the cowl uh, opening. So, we can lift her up. You know, he's looking around not too pleased, and even more so uh, about the size of the door than the front vent missing. You know, he was always saying he's got to get in and out of the car, and that's not happening with this design. I I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I mean, uh, right. I I'm not an acrobat. I can't do that anymore. You know, Victor's getting back to basics here. He's like, you know, I'm no spring chicken. We need to get a little more conservative with this. And I'm thinking conservative, that is like, the opposite of Victor Cacho. Right there, it looks the best open, literally. Mm. That's design concept wise, that's it. The problem is, I gotta get in this thing and out of it, and I don't wanna, hey man, that's the coolest car I've ever seen. Too bad that guy can't get in <laughs> and out. All of a sudden, Victor starts drawing a bigger door. Same flavor as what was established, but just bigger. And that, to me, starts to look a little less cool. I don't know, it makes me think of like one of those snow hats with the ears on it. <laughs> yeah, right off that point, let me see from this side. There's nothing cool about that. And that's a pretty good opening there. What do you think, can you pull that off? Well, huh? what, I was, what I was struggling with, I'll show you with another color tape. Just real quick, this is what I was doing the whole time. In typical form, I put on my lawyer suit and start giving him the spiel, giving him the sales pitch. Right, so you got this. Yes. You got this. Yes. Then that's got to somehow tie it, so you're damn close there. Maybe he can meet me halfway like that. Yeah, because then we still got the front end opening too. That would do it, because I just got to get my foot in. Am I there? Am I clearing it? Yeah, man, I'll put some high heels on you. You'll be fine. I picked here, you picked here. Let's go 50-50. All right. And that's what it is. As usual, it works. You know, we meet in the middle. Something's looking better than it would have otherwise. We decide is we're gonna mock up a few subtle changes. You know, reconfigure the rear vent a little, make it a little smaller, work out this final door gap opening and uh, remove this T-boned look from the rocker panel. We both agree it looks caved in. The roof is done. Go for it. The opening on the door is done. Go for it. That vent's done, right? And if I can't get into that, I shouldn't have a supercar. <laughs> After this conversation, I'm confident I'm ready to go. 
And that's it, make it happen. Victor and I got the design of the side of the car nailed. Now I just gotta build it. First step is to get this thing into fiberglass and work on completing it. So at this point, we are strictly on to prepping this for the mold. Everything here is to just create a nice mirror finish block sanded surface. The roof opening door section will be cut out later after the mold's done. So this is a giant generic shape. Although this still opens right here, I'm going to be able to just draw the brand new one. We're gonna carve that in and the mold will reflect that new line. Typical modeling scenario, you know, paint the gray, neutral tone, stand back, check it out. I really mellowed out that pronounced bulge on the front fender because it was affecting the final line opening of what the roof parting line was gonna be. So in having this nice smooth surface, I can redraw that and then kind of get a, a feel for what the proportion is. Yeah, just sitting back looking at it, you know, the fender before was this really bulbous shape towards the rear. And I think that this line will bring it back. I'll carve that in and the mold will represent the new parting line for the roof. The whole thing with drawing or taping the lines where the opening will be is that is a point of debate and that fortunately won't have to be established till even after the mold is done. I'll be able to modify that right up into the very end. So you see it puts that round shape back in the fender just by having a, a line drawn on it. Plenty of room to step in, not stepping over the vent like Victor didn't want. You know, the vent is greatly decreased from what I had originally conceptualized. But in doing those few minor things, the rocker panel looks completely blank, totally generic, not okay. You know, Victor got his one point of practicality and I'm not willing to negotiate anymore. Because remember, my idea was way the heck out here, but he's having to jump a hurdle to get in the car. So now we just gotta take in the lower portion to match the stuff we're committing to. For once, Victor is uh, conceding to his practical side. It's a little hard to stomach. <laughs> he's, he's usually the guy with the far out ideas. He's telling me to rein it in. You cool with that? I'm just gonna cut off the rocker panel. I'm just gonna cut the rocker panel off and make a new one. Crazy thing is that almost works as a vent, as an open area. For this rocker panel, I've got a brand new old idea. We're gonna use another piece of the sterling. Ah, oh, look at that. And the concept of this sterling rocker panel is actually really cool and putting it on the car, you know, it, it, it almost works. Nothing fancy here, simple water pipe. You can get it at every home supply store. But we're gonna make a supercar out of it. The Sterling panel is a really curvy thing. You know, it looks like a dune buggy on the bottom. It's very swoopy, so the PVC will offer a very straight shot from the front to the rear tire. Getting this bottom line established, it's looking good, but the, the area towards the rear tire where the vent is just doesn't look right. I think I'm just gonna delete that end part of the rocker panel where it becomes a vent. Just let the concave surface speak for itself. Now I'm really curious to see what Victor's thinking about. <laughs> so he's throwing me a curveball. I'm not doing what he's asking for. I just hope he likes it. Name of the game here has been a ton of body work. I got a team here helping me out. It's looking good. Victor's been kind of MIA. You know, he's got about 15 businesses. He's a busy guy. I took the reins on this. If he needs to change anything, it's gotta be right now, because I'm looking to mold this. Wow. And 
Wow, dude, come on. Long time no see, compadre. You don't sleep? <laughs> I've only been gone a few days, not months. I got assistance, man. We got a crew doing the night shift. That's how this happens. It just, I'm just trying to absorb, excuse me, I'm like overwhelmed right now with like figuring out what the heck you did here. Victor comes in and he's kind of speechless. <laughs> and maybe in a good way. Man, I love the rocker panel because it's not straight. It's coming here and then bulging out with the white tires I got yeah. for this thing. And then he starts elaborating on dimension and flow and proportion and all that. You know you're on the right path. All the lines and all that effort and it's all coming together. It's a supercar, dude. I was explaining to Victor everything that's gone on thus far. You know, it's looking good, but the one thing unestablished is the actual line where the roof opens from the body. So this is gonna come and shoot right out here. This nose is gonna open this way, and then the roof, of course, comes up and over. And that's big enough where I can get in. That's pretty cool. Getting this tape line on the car, you know, that was the clincher. That sealed the deal. He's got his access. I got the look of the long front fender. Figured it out. It's about commitment, my man. Once that mold is finalized, there's very limited room for changes, so it's got to happen here. Have I ever changed anything? No, you're always a man of just <laughs> solid. I'm feeling really good about what we've accomplished thus far. You know, the model of this car is awesome. The one thing is, we got to build an entire mold on this car. Building a mold on an entire car body is nothing I've ever done. You know, it's pretty ambitious. The next stage is the biggest challenge yet.